Welcome back to the Intelligent Human Leadership Podcast. It is a great honor to be here with you. Uh, I was going to record a podcast last week, but unfortunately, uh, I was I and my family were disrupted by a local fire here in Southern California. In fact, um, we are one of three major fires here. For those of you that follow um, or live in California, I was a part of the line fire, which came up uh, and uh, on uh, Saturday, September 7th, uh, caused us to unfortunately have to evacuate our home. Um, thankfully, we are back home. <clears throat> we are safe. And the firefighters have been doing an amazing job at protecting our home, property, life, uh, most importantly. Um, and so I thought, what better prompting to bring to you here on, on this week's podcast of how do we deal with uncertainty? How do we uh, face that with resilience and redundancy? And uh, I'll dive a little bit more in the details of this episode of the podcast, but the challenge is um, we all have uncertainties. We all have challenges that come before us. And how do we face them, uh, particularly ones when they're unexpected? You know, there's one thing when we have challenges, when we've anticipated and we know they're coming. That's one way. But I want to focus on the things of how do we how do we ad adapt and face those challenges, which will inevitably come? Um this episode, I, I hope, will empower you as we dive into this challenge of how do I have resiliency and redundancy in how I how I operate myself and how do I lead my team? You know, our, our focus here on the Intelligent Human Leadership Podcast is always to empower you. Number one, number two, to take actionable items that you can apply in your life today. Uh, how you're how you're leading yourself, how you're leading your teams. So we'll go through this today and. I'll start really with the foundations of resilience. Um, we all have setbacks. We all have challenges, both in our personal and professional life. Um, and one of the things I often focus with when you come through and work with me in the Steward Your Business um, or Steward Yourself program is we start with your mindset. How are you grounded? Um, are you overcome with fear, anxiety, worry? Or do you have a sense of faith, hope, do you have a sense that a vision of what could be or the mission on where you're going? Um, if we're not grounded in, in being solution oriented under pressure, we're going to be that person flailing around, causing maybe more damage than is necessary in the situation. Now, for this example, uh, one of the things that of the mindset for myself and my family is when we were going through this, this fire literally coming at our door was what's the most important things and to keep that in perspective and understand that our life, our, our relationships, obviously uh, we have some pets as well, but how do we, how do we solve these solutions? We, we kept the priorities in the, in the right place and, and we looked at things and where are we spending time in, in, in our evacuation? What were we focusing it on? So, you know, staying, supportive of one another um and just having a calmness as best we could despite this is harrowing ch challenge in this time for us in the last week and a half uh of how do we handle the pressure that's coming on um you also have that have that emotional intelligence as well you know i've talked about this in past episodes but understanding your emotions um that's why i love the uh, the the uh, eight, the leadership perspective in humans, not AI. <laughs> we all have. There's always you know AIs out there, but that's not going to replace humans. And AIs, while they can mimic emotions, they can't um, truly have and experience those emotions that you and I can. Um, so we have to have the understanding of our, our emotional awareness, not only of ourselves but our teams and the dynamics that are going on there during crisis and challenge. And we have to, again, I mentioned this earlier, be adaptable, uh, be able to pivot to the new challenges that come. If we're very rigid, if we're fixed in our mindset, if we're emotionally immature, all those things are gonna be really challenging to have resilience in your business and other aspects of your life. Um, 
you know, we all went through, if you're listening to this and you've been around uh, for a few years, you went through the COVID-19 pan pandemic, lots of things changed there. Uh, you've seen the shift um, in our daily living. Uh, those that we just literally had 9-11 here, uh, remembrance of the 9-11 attacks in 2001, um, where um, at one point I could go to the end of the terminal and see family and friends off, and that's no longer the case. We've had to adjust, unfortunately, uh, security levels uh, because we had to adapt. We realized there was, you know, there's risks there. And so we have to look and see what, what do we need to do in those in those challenges and, and pivot. Uh, listening to the firefighters talk, I was at a, a, a community meeting last night and having them shift and understand, hey, you know what? How do we provide different tools in our toolbox? They're using bulldozers to pull a fire line or bring air support here and having the firefighters over there um, because the fire behavior is changing and, and there's different terrain and there's always variables, right? So it, to be resilient means we have to have that, again, mindset of uh, being grounded, understanding, solution-oriented, understanding ourselves, know ourselves, the leader selves. I talked about this in previous podcast episodes of the five uh, voices language that you may, you may have heard of. We talk about our powernality and being flexible and adaptable. These are just some fundamentals about being resilient in business, both internally and externally within your team, um, knowing yourself and your team. And again, if we're not doing these things, we're going to do more damage or harm. And that's not what an intelligent human leader does. They're equipping, they're they're empowering, they're leading themselves and their teams well. Um, so resiliency is one of the components, but redundancy is another one that I want to have you think about the problem of, are you having redundancy in your business or the way you're leading yourself? What is, what is this in the context? What is redundancy in, in this context? It's the process of having, you know, backup systems, um, process, it, it's, it's, you know, standard operating procedures, people in place to mitigate risks, uh, ensure business continuity. Um, we had a, a speaker last night from uh, from the Operation um, Office of Emergency Services for San Bernardino County, where, where this individual pulls together all the different resources, been, depending on the level of severity, uh, to support the community, the individuals. Uh, do you have that? Do you have the ability to bring people in? For the fire here, we had what's called mutual aid. We had people as far as uh, Fresno and Milpitas and and a different, all different places throughout California and, and perhaps even beyond, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe those are doing uh, aircraft um, uh, work and whatnot. So there's this idea of mutual aid and people coming in because there's a system there, a purposely de design. I heard one of the... Um, Deputy uh, uh, um, U.S. Fish, U.S. Uh, Forest Service uh, representatives talking about how they regularly have coffee, they regularly are meeting with other people because they need to be building those relationships ahead of the the, the issue that comes up. Um, looking at your systems and processes for redundancy. Look at how you can create alternate processes or cross train your employees to ensure critical functions continue <laughs> when resources are unavailable. Um, I'm going to get to a specific example here in a moment about that, uh, related also to team redundancy. Uh, do you have additional team members to help cover each other and so that we're avoiding a single point of failure? Um, I mean, how many of you have relied on a key person and that person got sick, they took a new position, and it really threw you into turmoil? Because you didn't have any, you didn't. They didn't document their processes. They didn't document how the they all the steps that they went through, and and so that therefore, uh, when a payroll week came through, <laughs> or when some you know something key came through, you didn't have all the steps documented, and there was a big snafu, a challenge there, um, and making sure that you have also the necessary resources, right? Um, resource planning allocation. Um, having necessarily the supply chains, if you will, 
or the right people to move around, kind of team redundancies or resources in the right place. Um, that can be a huge limiter as well. Do you have those redundancies? Um, one I learned really early on, I was working on a project called uh, TRTP, Tasha B, Renewable Transmission Line Project for Southern California Edison. One of the things I learned early on in my career that was managing, help manage this project is we had uh, a primary uh, field lead biologist in this case, and they were basically on all the time. <laughs> and what we realized was, hey, construction continues to call on them. There's changes in the schedule. And we realized this is not sustainable for having one person. Again, single point of contact. I was working with this individual uh, at the time when we were first getting started on the project. And we realized this is not sustainable. And we hadn't thought of all of the ramifications of redundancy having additional people that could step in for this person if they needed to take a day off, they got sick. Um, there was just too much put on one position. And I wanna help you in this way. And this is where we I work together with teams and business owners that we look at, how do we divide the work or how do we understand what's most important than what you do and versus what other people can do and to support them. So we, over time, built processes and redundancy into the that sustained the project that was a long lasting project. This wasn't just a short term project. This was years I worked on the, this project. It was really necessary in order to sustain the project, to say, sustain the production and the quality too. Um, there's a, a production and production capacity kind of understanding if you've ever read the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And oftentimes we kind of, you know, think of this as a teeter totter, if you will, of production and production capacity. And so we have to look at both of those and make sure we're not trying to, you know, we don't, we don't, if we don't have redundancy, that's going to get thrown off. If you, your, your production is going to go way down because you don't have the production capacity and the redundancy to support changes in that. Um, and so, like I said, we had to understand and learn this over time and, I want to help you be that intelligent human leader so that you're not having to go through the same challenges or problems I did. You're going to have new ones and different ones, but you're going to help step over these ones that come before you by building in redundancy in your system, uh, your processes throughout your company. And um, sometimes we don't even realize that we don't have it until somebody else comes in and kind of pulls back the covers if you will, and starts looking at things and say, so is this well-defined? Oh no, that's not. Um, what I found is a, is a good way, if you wanna test this in a fairly safe way, is to go on vacation, take time off, disconnect for a week, even, even a day or two, and see what breaks, see what gaps come up. Inevitably, there will be a gap, um, and then you're gonna be like, oh, I didn't think about that. I didn't document that process. I didn't know who was else gonna take that on, right? What was the redundancy there? I was just working with a client the other day where they had a process or a, a system they're using in, in GIS, geographical information systems, and they didn't have a good process of who's maintaining licenses and billing and following up on all that kind of stuff. And it just kind of got lost in the matrix. And so you may be paying for things that you don't even necessarily need, or you're not prepared to get the licenses and onboard the people you need to in, the, in a timely manner because you don't have the systems and the processes or the right people in the right place. Um, so how do we balance all of this? How do we all balance resiliency and redundancy um, to that the resilience is really there to help you recover from the setbacks? while redundancy ensures that those setbacks don't cripple you um, in the first place. We need both um, because without one or the other, it, it's not going to get you there. Uh, it's not going to get you across the line. It's not going to get you thriving. And you want to look at something. So some strategies we can do in um, integrating those um, are risk management. Um, look at tools like risk assessments to preemptively identify challenges. Uh, we can look and see where we might have an issue there. Um, 
Now, I'll give you an example. One of the times I'll, I'll work, I've done a lot of work on like Caltrans projects here in California. And oftentimes a contractor says, well, I just want one biologist. I just want one point of contact. Because for them, that's it feels good. It feels like I just have to talk with one person. And that's an, a great ideal if that person never got sick, never had to take a vacation, was always on 24-7 because you never know if an emergency comes up. Um, yes, I get it. It's nice for somebody just to call any old time, the same person. I get, I get it. But the reality is there's always a risk of that person um, being sick. Uh, there's a risk of them you know, burning out, quite honestly. Uh, they need to take time off. They may honestly have to do other projects that require their specific skills and abilities that takes them away from being on the other project. So what is your strategy to mitigate that risk of a... I have to have another backup person. And one of the links I've found on key projects like that too, for example, on this on this kind where you're working with regulatory agencies like Caltrans, maybe working with um, the state or the federal agencies as they get certain resumes or people approved for certain work. Well, if you don't think ahead and you don't have additional people approved or backed up, even if they're not the primary person, the, the, the project stops. Remember, the production is halted. So you're not getting in helping your client ultimately you're you're being a hindrance at this point because you didn't think more proactively on how we can get some more people approved what's our backup if this person something happens to this person or how can we have um you know redundancy there so we're looking for both um resilient meaning like can we how can we find the people get bounce back and be solution oriented and then have the redundancy there one other one you can do, I'm kind of, I highlighted this briefly earlier about this idea of like take a vacation or create, create a crisis simulation. Um, for those of you that live in California, at least, because that's where I'm born and raised, we have earthquake simulations every so often. Um, we used to do it all the time in school when I was growing up, but we say, hey, pretend that there's an earthquake happening. What do you do? Um, and then what's, what's the, what's the, uh, ramifications. Unfortunately, we live in a world today now where we have to do active shooter uh, crises. Uh, I wish that wasn't the case, but we have, uh, unfortunately, evil out there. We have people that are going to do uh, harmful, dangerous things. And so we have to think about what would happen in that case. Uh, if there was a fire in your building, I remember doing this years ago of, you know, what's the exit routes, right? Where do we meet up? Where's the muster group? Uh, I'm going to be going on a cruise coming up here, which I'll tell you guys more about when I get return, returning. But I was just going through the paperwork because we have to look at all the safety information, what happens. These are all things that we can do. And I haven't been in cruise in a long time, but I still have to go through and look at the safety and be prepared. What would I do? How would I uh, be prepared for that? Um, and so that way you're averting or minimizing your risk, right? You're minimizing. Um, where there may be challenges there. And you can identify where can there be redundancies. Um, and this is really, really important. Um, I focus mostly on the people side, but you can look at this in financial aspects of looking at who's reviewing your books. Where am I having a bookkeeper, a tax person looking, give me some guidance, perhaps somebody in an in a IT role, cybersecurity, how are they looking at things, protecting you? Um, there's lots of different ways. We're here, we're focused mostly on, on your you as the human leader. And that's kind of the last part here that I want to highlight is invest in your people in your systems. We want to balance technology and processes in leadership development to handle both short-term and long-term uncertainty. If you invest and train and coach your team, they're going to be better prepared to face uncertainty that inevitably will come. That's where I can come in with Steward Your Business in helping you. Um, you don't have to do and know all of this stuff. Nobody expects you as a business owner or leader to know all at all. You want to lean on other resources and truly invest. Um, invest in that so that you're prepared and ready to face those things. Those that are more practice, like I mentioned earlier, practicing this, um, like the fire departments talking with each other over the years, not waiting to the big fire to come up. And, and saying, I don't even know this person. We're going to work together. If they're intentionally doing that now, and I've seen this firsthand, it makes all the difference when they're on the front lines facing great challenges and, and turmoil. And so if you're doing that as a business owner, leading yourself and your teams that way, you're going to be in a much better place to succeed. And, you know, 
outpace the competition that's not doing that. Um, and that's where I can come in uh, and help you. So practical tips here as we're wrapping up the podcast today is you as an individual leader, develop that resilient mindset through self-care, coaching. I'm here to help you in ongoing leadership training so that you can face head on with resiliency and redundancy, uncertainty and challenges that you're inevitably going to face. Cultivate agility and openness and change in your day-to-day leadership, knowing that you have to be flexible and ready to go. Now, we're not meant to do that in a vacuum. I would say, I invite you to come speak with me. Let's talk about how you can be part of the stewardship business community and that you go through this and you're not alone and you have others that are on this journey with you. Um, That makes a huge difference in my experience as a leader. Um, And for teams, you know, let's look and make sure that we're assuring cross training, role flexibility, understanding the roles and dynamics. How do we help each other? Again, I've talked a lot about this in the five voices. I have the five voices for teams that I do a full training and guidance on to make sure that you guys are collaborating and and supporting each other. Um, We want to build communication, decision-making, redundancies in team to prevent bottlenecks and crises. If it's all on one person, remember, that could be a breaking point in the organization. Um, And regularly evaluate. And let's like stress test critical business systems and processes be willing to open up the door look at these things identify what's working what's not working and get help i mean that's the biggest thing is if you know things aren't working right or you're knowing like man we are we're we're holding on by a thread Uh, i'm here today to encourage you and let you know you have an advocate in me you've heard me say this before of steward your business and coming alongside you and knowing you're not alone and having something that can help you focus on individuals, organizational health, you as a leader together. Remember that this resilience enables you recovery from all the challenges. It, it, it ensures the redundancy ensures the continuity by preventing critical failures. Uh, both are essential for managing your teams and businesses in uncertain times. I hope this helps you as you're listening to me on the podcast today and know that if this made a difference and you feel like, David, I'm, I'm, I've got some things to work out here. I don't have redundancy or I realize my resiliency is low uh, because I haven't considered these things. Reach out. I would love to hear from you. Share this podcast with others, letting them know that there's some, some that will get some benefit and help and pointing them in the right direction. Um, and of course, I appreciate you guys when you leave comments five-star reviews, that all makes a difference in getting the word out and so that I can help as many people as I can through Steward Your Business and this podcast, the Intelligent Human Leadership Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Come back again. I'll have more stories and shares. Thankfully, like you said, I've been back home uh, from these fires and I want to give a personal uh, shout out and praise to all of those that have have supported us here, um, my family uh, here in the San Bernardino Mountains that are working throughout Southern California, our firefighters, our first responders, um, they're just amazing. And I'm so grateful for that, for having them in their public service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you all for listening. Until next time, take care and take good care of yourself. Bye now.